I um, usually post videos every Wednesday now, and I that wasn't really my plan. I was going to post videos sometimes during the week, but now I feel semi-obligated, and I don't really have time. It's Tuesday evening. I don't have time to make anything fancy. I don't have any footage added up. I've been pretty busy just taking care of stuff, cutting a lot of firewood. So I thought I'd just uh, grab the camera and walk around and see what's going on and find stuff to talk about, because I always have stuff to talk about. So let's just run around and look at some stuff. Well, here's something cool. This is called Diogenes Lantern. And we've got some little seed pods growing down here. And I just think this flower is so cool. It's really iconic looking. Um, I've always wanted to take this and do an like a icon that's sort of like a line drawing, something kind of stylized, like take this and stylize it into an icon, basically. You can see how the center here is closed. It's like locked closed. And the edges of these petals in the middle have little serrations like hairs that lock the flower closed so that bugs can't get in there. And I'm sure that's to keep the flower safe until it's ready to be pollinated, like until it's, you know, fertile basically. And then these will open up and let the insects in. Super cool. This is a uh, rock culvert. Well, it's a culvert mouth that I rocked up and made this little, you know, rock walls on both sides. So it's kind of a basin basically, but the chickens have filled it with debris. So they've kicked all the debris off the hillside down into this ditch and then slowly kicked it over and into fill up this whole culvert basin. And as you can see, there's an animal that uses this to cross the road. Um, animals really like to cross under culverts. Um, I don't know what it is, probably a possum, skunk, could be anything. Anyway, when I built this, I took any place where there was any dirt or I, I would fill the cracks with dirt, I planted these Diogenes lantern. And that one right there is the first one that's bloomed, but I've managed to establish a bunch of them in this rock wall. So when those start to bloom, it's gonna be really cool because they'll be like, you know, these yellow flowers hanging down over the rock face. And here are some seed pods that are closer to ripe. I can time it right and get them before they split open and drop the seeds. I'll come out here and collect the seeds and then, you know, spread them around in different places. Here's one of my two loquat trees. And these are just getting to be prime right now. They don't keep very well. They don't ripen well off the tree. You kind of just have to eat them off the tree or figure out a way to preserve them. I don't, I've never had enough to preserve them, so I don't know what I'm gonna do with them in the future. I'd come out every day and pick the ripe ones and eat them. And they are pretty good. Juicy like a plum, uh, acidic but sweet. Maybe a little bit of apricot flavor um, and pear maybe. It's, it's hard to describe them. They're good though. This is a slate roof uh, made with Vermont slate that I designed and built with my ex-girlfriend. It was a whole bunch of work. It's not quite finished yet. I still have to finish the cupola up there, the little uh, kind of cap thing on the top. But it, I mean, you need to cut out a few days of like just really concentrating on doing that. So hopefully you'll see a video on that this summer. And also finishing my other slate roof, which we can go take a look at. This hip line is kind of interesting. It's kind of like an optical illusion, sort of designed to appear somewhat rounded, although the shapes that are cut into it are far from that. Um, you can see it has sort of a rounded over look to it. It depends on what angle you're looking at it from, but it's really neat. From here it just looks like, you know, straight tiles. But the more you get at it from kind of like the side, it has sort of a rounded effect. Here's one of my many old forges that are just sitting around rusting away, unused. Um, I'm not sure how much I'll use them in the future or what kind of forge I want to be using. Probably not a coal forge like this. I might design something a little bit longer and narrower for burning charcoal because I hope to be burning charcoal for any blacksmithing I do from here on out, at least for the most part. Here's my uh, trusty old Peter Wright anvil. It's all covered in junk and rusty and neglected up here. I have a couple small anvils down at the house that I use just to whack on once in a while, but uh, I should get this one out and Get it down in the yard where I can use it once in a while. It's a very nice anvil. I remember when I first got this anvil, it was all rusty and I was like, who would abuse an anvil like this and like let it get all rusty? And I, I took a wire brush and I polished the entire thing. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna take care of my anvil. And now here it is just sitting out here getting rusty for years on end. But that's okay, they're tough. By the way, that chain on the anvil is for dampening the ring. A lot of people say that your anvil should ring or it's not a good anvil, which isn't necessarily true, but. One thing it will do is make you deaf because it's like super loud. That anvil's very loud. So I keep a chain wrapped around it and that just deadens the 
the sound a little bit. Look at the size of that loquat. This one's called Oliver, and it's definitely more orange than the other one. Flesh is pretty orange. The skins on these are thick and not super tasty, so I usually peel them. They peel really easy, you know, you can just like usually strip the peel off in like three or four parts. I think some goals for breeding loquats would be, you know, size. If you didn't sacrifice flavor by making them bigger, uh, size would be good. Uh, single seeds and smaller seeds. But I doubt there's many people working on breeding loquats, unfortunately. They're, they're pretty promising fruit. This is my healthiest walnut tree. It'll produce quite a few walnuts this year. I don't know how many years old it is, but it's definitely into production and that's good. I planted quite a few walnuts, maybe nine or 10, something like that. But this one's really happy because it's under the compost or the compost is on top of it. This gets a lot of nutrients that the other walnut trees don't get. So they're all growing slow and this is growing fast. This is soap root. Now this is a native plant that you can use as soap. It's also called amole, amole lily, soap lily, soap root. Um, obviously it can be used as soap and it has a whole bunch of other really neat uses. So anyway, it's in flower right now. And up the stem here, you can see like there's a cluster blooming now. Well, these only bloom for one night. They just opened a few hours ago and by morning they'll be closed up tight. And then, you know, tomorrow morning this little set here will bloom, and then the next night this set will bloom, et cetera, et cetera. But they just open at night, and in the evening the bees will come around and pollinate them a little bit. And then at night, you know, probably moths and stuff like that uh, work on them, and then by morning it's all done. So here's my other slate roof project. This one is very time consuming. Um, taking, just cutting the slates takes about a day for each side or more, and uh, as you can see, the hip line there is also pretty complex and takes a lot of cutting and careful laying. This is sort of inspired by a blue belly lizard scales, and um, it has one more side to go, and then two of these hip lines have to be done after that. So it's gonna take a few days to finish for sure, and I'm hoping to do that this summer and bust out some videos on slate roofing and just showing this project a little bit more. So, pretty cool. All right, I think that's it for this evening. A few interesting things. I mean, I just feel like anywhere I walk on the property I have stuff to talk about, so maybe we'll do some more of these videos because I think that's pretty fun.